All right, let's um, let's call this meeting to order at uh, 507. Um, public engagement. Any member of the public who wishes to address the ad advisory board of public works works is asked to submit any comments or concerns at least two hours prior to the start of the meeting. And did we have any public participation tonight? We do not. Okay. Uh, Joe, do you want to start board updates or anything, or do you want to go right into the budget? Um, I'll go right into the budget. I don't think there isn't really anything. Um, the council will be reviewing um, the proposal that the board voted on last time. Uh, related to the trash and refuse. In the uh, uh, that's Monday. Um, that'll probably be the beginning conversation and then we'll be having basically the same budget conversation after that. Um, outside of that, we're just trying to catch up on some bonus time we have on Albion Street and we are cautiously optimistic that spring is around the corner and we'll be able to get back to working on stuff. Can I ask you one question? Um, just when you said Albion Street, it, it um, reminded me. What is the status, if you know, of the um, the portion of um, oh, what is it? It intersects with North Ave. Um, it's not Albion. It's the next. It runs parallel to Albion. That's been Broad shut down. Broadway. Broadway. Thank you. Um, it's is that. I know it has something to do with the feds coming to inspect the work, but is there any date on that? Uh, so as far as our understanding is the federal railroad has all the information that the town can give them. Um, there is a comment period that they have, which I believe expired on the 22nd of February. And basically any, any day now, there's uh, allegedly one person in Washington DC Oh, you cut out. Um, sign off on oh, sorry. Did you pick any of that up? No, just something about someone in Washington, D.C. And that was it. You froze. Yeah. yeah. So the, the town submitted um, our quiet zone calculations to D.C. Uh, there's a representative of the Federal Railroad down there that reviews it and has the authority to sign off on it, whether they agree or disagree. Mm -hmm. sent them. It's basically in that person's hands right now. There was a comment period, I believe, uh, that expired for a sunset for them on the 22nd of February. So now we're just patiently waiting for hopefully the green light so we can restore everything and get back to normal. Okay. Um, and who, just out of curiosity, who from, is it Bill or who's following up with whoever that individual is just to say, you know, um, it's March 1st, um, can we expect to hear something? Yep, so Bill is in frequent contact with uh, another person who represents the Northeast, who is, I believe the station that is Southern Maine. Um, um, that's the gentleman who came down into the site, walked with us, uh, mm -hmm. before we submitted our package to them, they reviewed it, just to make sure that, you know, kind of a nice cursory review that we weren't missing anything that they were like mm -hmm. see on it. Um, from that person's perspective, everything that, you know, we had proposed made sense and calculated the same. Uh, now we just need Washington DC to agree. Okay. So they've been very good with us. So anytime that they've good. ever had additional information, they've been proactive with getting a hold of us. So I'd imagine if, if we don't find out from Washington, we might get some sort of inkling, you know, that, it, that it's on the correct desk from that person in Maine. But to date, uh, we haven't heard anything. So we follow up with them just about weekly to make sure that, you know, they're still keeping us on their mind as we have them on ours. Oh, good. Because I would imagine for those, um, not, not to mention the residents on Broadway, but the businesses at the kind of intersection there, it, it's, it, I'm assuming it's something they have like resolved um, as well. I would not disagree with that statement. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for the update. I appreciate it. You're welcome. I wish I had something better to tell you, but hopefully, no, hopefully I, the next update is, is the news that we want to hear. That will be good. I know it's been um, certainly an unexpected wrinkle um, in a project that seems to have gone very smoothly. So um, 
Fingers crossed. <laughs> so, uh, Elena, did you have anything that you wanted to bring up or no? Okay. Um, Joe, did you want to get right into it? Did you, how did you want to go about it? Um, I could go right into it. So uh, I included the summation, which is basically a quick highlight uh, overview of, of all the major things that change um, in the budget for the year. It's essentially the Reader's Digest budget. <clears throat> uh, so, but some of the things, so I'll just kind of, I'll work through that. And then if anybody wants to stop or ask a question along the way, feel free to do so. Um, so some of the things that um, this year's budget we're going to see change are uh, in contractual services, we're up to about $195,000. Most of this is related to um, the labor union, the clerical union, the supervisory union uh, contracts. Partial of this last year for fiscal 21, we did have $110,500 cut out of our budget. Um, some of this number is restoring about $52,000 of that to try to gain back an FTE that we had approved for engineering. Some other things related to personal services, just the overtime adjustments related to the rates changing. And then uh, we had to align a couple of spots with temporary help with the uh, changing minimum wages. As far as purchase of services and materials supplies, as far as related to the tax side, um, we tried to keep it as small as possible, uh, not knowing you know, completely what the financial impact of the pandemic is gonna have on fiscal 22. We wanted to make sure that we were realistic with our asks and only put things in that were you know, areas that we definitely needed to address. Uh, one of those areas is to support it. Another area that we added some increases for traffic lines in the highway division. We added $10,000 to this. Uh, I would tell you historically, this is a place where we've always not budgeted enough. We've always been under. And this is one of those areas in the future with the Albion Street project in Vision, um, and then one of the shared streets projects, which will be going on down in Greenwood. Uh, this is something that's gonna get more expensive every year. So we need to make sure that we're starting to ramp that up to an area that's appropriate. The buildings division, uh, we see a slight, um, maybe not a slight increase, but there's an increase in the electricity line item for this year. This budget is uses uh, rates that are given to us by the municipal gas and light department. And then from there, we basically just use a five year consumption average and we budget the average. Uh, this year, the average is a little bit skewed because the Civic Center has basically turned into uh, school session B. They're using it a lot more. Uh, it's a big, wide open space and can allow for some distancing. So the electricity, heat, and cooling in that building has obviously been skewed. Uh, so this number going up is in preparation for that building to be basically online 12 to 16 hours a day. Outside of that, uh, forestry and parks, We've been trying to work up our crane rental or our equipment budget. Um, that was something that, you know, we used to only budget $20,000 a year. We we're looking to get it to 30. We increased it five last year and five this year. Uh, so this will be getting us up to about $30,000. And what this really is, is this budget's paying for, um, we're in a good spot. We benefit pretty well from the light department and the street tree program. But what we're finding is that a lot of the trees left to the town trees, we have to address it requiring expensive crane rentals. So this is to appropriately uh, address that. Snow and ice for the year uh, is gonna stay the same. We're not recommending any changes on it. Um, our rates you know, change every year, obviously. And our average ticks up based on you know, our estimates. Uh, but for the past two years, we've had two very mild, you know, very, very cooperative winters. Uh, so we don't really think at this time right now, uh, this is anything that we want to touch. I would say this uses a lot of averages in it too. We go by average snowfall and things like that to try to get our baseline. So this is something moving forward. If we continue to experience mild winters uh, like the last two, that we'll probably have to look into adjusting a little bit more. So that basically sums up, I, I know it sounds brief, but that basically sums up the tax levy side of the budget. I don't know if anybody has any questions or comments related to that uh, before we keep going. 
One just really quick question in terms of like the snow and the ice budget. If if you don't, I just want to, I forget, I know I asked this last year and I've forgotten. If the entire budget is not used, what happens to the remainder? It goes back to the general fund of the town. Okay. So the the town would use that. It would essentially be a, a turn back. So they would have that. It would either offset um, something that popped up this year that was an unanticipated expense, or they'd use it to lower the threshold that they need for taxing next year. Okay. Joe, could you explain in a little more detail about the the um, position that was reduced and is now being brought half back in? What the details of that are? Yeah, sure. So uh, basically, last year's budget, we, we had asked for um, an administrative support staff member for the engineering department. And basically, what the, the goal of that was is to, you know, we've taken a very aggressive stance on trying to get, you know, basically whatever grants we can get um, and take on a little bit more of the design of some projects in house. But what we we're finding is, you know, you, you'd have somebody in that role who is in AutoCAD designing a project, trying to put a grant submission together. And at the time when customers could come to the window, they would have to stop what they're doing to go address it at the window. So what the intent was at the time was to put a point person out there who could do some of the administrative tasks of the office and also serve as that point piece to keep the engineers designing and doing more of the engineering things uh, throughout the day. When the pandemic came in, um, everybody basically, you know, had to contribute a little bit of their budget back to making sure that we could still support all the town services. For us, where this was a newer position, um, it was an easy one, you know, for Steve and, and the town to say, basically, can you put this on pause for a while? So collectively, um, in our personal services between engineering and highway, we reduced 110500 a good portion of it was police details in the highway side, and then um, which is essentially this position in engineering. So one of the things that we asked for this year, um, knowing that Envision's coming, knowing that Albion Street's going on, you know, I feel like at this point in time in, in the admin office and engineering office, we have a lot of large scale things going on. So I'd like to keep those folks focused on that. So we're requesting that that admin be able to come in and join us. So that 52,371 reflects the full salary for that admin? Yes, plus, plus a, a little bit more. I don't, I'm not 100% sure on, on how the accountants and Steve figured out exactly what the split was, but it's essentially that body is. And what is the staffing level in the engineering office right now? So we have four engineers. We have one GIS personnel. And a construction inspector. Okay. And then an, an admin, if um, you know, approved by Yeah. Okay. So you have one admin. This would be an additional admin. We have no admins over there. Okay. All right. So this would be. This, this would be an addition. Yes. Okay. Is the and is it? I haven't been to town hall. Is it? open now or people coming into the windows again yeah so we're we're still open um our groups have looked different this year at times you know splitting shifts and, and kind of trying to keep everybody away from each other but um mm -hmm. there have been at least two bodies in each office throughout the whole pandemic wow. um it is open uh, the hours when the numbers started to creep up just before christmas were dialed back to um from 8 to 12 30. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably subject to change but we're still responsible to that window and anybody that wants to come in and do business so we're here terrific sorry about the light show right. so if i keep going um so then the other two major parts of our budget the water and sewer enterprises. So a couple of highlights related to the sewer side. Um, compared to where we were last year, budget to budget comparison, our sewer assessment has actually decreased in what we're asking for this year versus last year. 
in the sum of about $58,000 and change. Our budget increase with the sewer assessment from the MWRA is 0.2285%. Uh, without the MWRA, that increase is 0.8832%. The MWRA represents approximately 75.5% of the budget. Some other things that uh, affected the sewer budget this year, personal service adjustments, just like the tax side, overtime adjustments based on those. Um, an administrative expense, what that is, is uh, the enterprises actually fund the piece of the salary for the tax collector's office. They do all of the collection of our billing. Um, so that number in both water and sewer reflects increases in the clerical unions there. As far as purchase and service for sewer goes, there's a little bit of an uptick in electricity and natural gas. Again, that's just our averages. I'd say every part of our budget, with the exception of sewer, saw a change in electricity. Um, with the sewer end, you know, the pumping stations run basically 24 hours a day, and no matter what's going on, that's generally not going to stop. We also added in $27,000 for a cleaning program for a Farm Street pumping station. Basically, what this is is each quarter, all the wet wells in that building get emptied cleaned of grease, and they go through the whole thing. You think of it like your yearly checkup, we're doing it at that building every quarter. Um, that's something that we have been doing once or twice a year, and we thought that is fitting to do that program on a quarterly basis. I've said it before, and I'll say it probably until the day I retire, that that is the most important building in town, and that is one that cannot afford to go down. So this is a good preventative maintenance program for that building. We increased a little bit in our emergency fund. Uh, that's just something we hadn't added to in quite some time. And you know, the cost of doing construction in the street is rising. So we're just trying to bring that up a little bit. The sewer user charge is an increase there in the budget of $13,000 and change. What that is, is that is bills that we pay other communities for Wakefield homes that required using their sewer. Um, so think of it this way. I know, Elena, you know of it, but um, if you live on a road that borders the two towns, you're a Wakefield address, but your plumbing's connected to the Melrose sewer system. So we actually pay Melrose for the sewage that's going in there. And we do the same exact thing on the water side. If we don't have the infrastructure in the street, the home may technically be in Wakefield, but the closest infrastructure is owned by another community. That's actually a payment to that community. Um, material and supplies, we saw a small increase of $2,000. And then on the debt side of the sewer budget, we actually saw some INI debt fall off and we saved $63,518 there. Does anybody have any questions on sewer? Joe, what um, the Farm Street pumping station, what, what, what does it do? I, I, I'm sorry to admit complete ignorance, but can you explain why, in your opinion, it's so important? So I would say probably 80% of what goes down the drain heads to that building in town. That building, if you remember last year, uh, people got some chuckles. We replaced the Muffin Monster, which basically took all the solids and ground it into a pulp. And what it does is all of it collects there in wells, and that is where the pumps push all that towards Deer Island. Uh -huh. So that is basically the ejection seat for Wakefield, for lack of a better term. I see. Um, so from that point on, it basically gets sent into warp speed and heads towards some of the larger MWRA conduit to take it for treatment at Deer Island. Okay. So if that were to, to go down, that would be a really, really terrible, nasty mess, correct? Yeah, so right now, if that were to go down, we would basically have to do kind of like a pumping relay. So we would have to pump the wells with trucks, take them downstream, and continually do that until we could get that building up and running. Okay. And Joe, that building has backup power too, right? Yes, yeah, so it's a generator and everything like that. The big thing for us with, with getting that and cleaning that is all of the nasty ends up there. So it collects a lot of grease and a whole lot of, of just things that you know could cause problems down the line so if we could catch it there and clean it there you know then we might be saving ourselves some trouble you know further on down the road um, so it's it's been working out quite well 
Uh, and it's something that I think is important to, you know, put a program together and address it regularly. I definitely agree that makes sense. Um, I'm curious, so we have about a $60,000 decrease from the MWRA and a $60,000 decrease from debt. Um, so 120,000 decrease, and yet we're still looking at a small, you know, that 0.2285% increase to the overall budget. Mm -hmm. um, and then the items that you've called out here certainly don't total to that 120,000. So is the bulk of that, 100, that 120 plus of increase from uh, the contractual raises? So it's contractual raises and then there's all the, um, the pension prices are self-sustaining. So it's a contractual raise, but it's also insurance, which changes retirement, um, all the other benefits that come with the employees related to that. Okay. So all, all lumped into that. So contractual increases are, are kind of the, the biggest driver, I would say, but it also lumps in, you know, insurance, so, you know, uh, not post-employment benefits, but other, you know, health insurance, different things like that. General insurance for the enterprise, um, Medicare, you know, workers' comp insurance for the employees that work in the enterprises, things like that. Okay. Yeah, it's, it just, I wonder, do you know what the dollar value is of that 0.2285%? how close we were to being able to say no increase, I guess is my question. Yeah, I can, um, I can tell you in two seconds. Can I come back to that? I'll keep going, but I will give you that number. Okay, thank you. I just gotta, op I gotta open up another document. I'm afraid my computer's gonna buffer me into non-existence, so. Okay, yeah, my main, question is really, you know, when, given that we're so close to having no increase, it'd be nice to be able to not increase sewer rates when, it, when we get to the time of rate setting. So, you know, if it's, if there's any wiggle, wiggle room anywhere where we can get that down to just zero, it would be I'm, really nice. I'm hoping that the preliminary assessment may stand the chance to go down. Yep. Um, if that's the case, we're in great shape. Great. Okay. Um, you, you know, uh, as well as now everybody knows. Good question, uh, but cautiously optimistic. Okay, all right, great. And I will say if it does end up being a negative once we get our final MWRA assessment, I would, I would never recommend decreasing the rate. So, you know, no, better so level fund and, and, you know, assume more debt or do something else with that money. Um, so the, the interesting thing with this related to the rate conversation is you remember last year when we did the, you know, the study and all the work, we were trying to get to a point where we were building up to do more self-funded annual capital. Yeah. And, you know, looking at these two budgets right off the bat, it, it almost looks like we're going to be able to still accomplish working towards that, but where we thought we might have had to go in and, and programmatically, you know, adjust the rates through the next so many years, we may have now altered that to a point where we can reset that whole thing. And, you know, if we thought we were going up X percent, it might be X minus 2% now. Uh, we're going to have to, we're going to have to look into that though, as we move into that next step this year. Okay, great. Thank you. No problem. Uh, on the water side, so the water side, we actually saw a decrease uh, in our assessment this year. Um, Steve and the folks at the water division changed up uh, how we're using Crystal Lake. They started pumping earlier in the morning uh, to try to take off some of that peak demand, and they had a better year than the previous year uh, with pumping. Manganese didn't hit us as hard as it did in the years previous, so we were able to go longer in the summer without needing to shut down. And that reflected in the assessment actually decreasing. Uh, so that was nice to see. The budget increase on the water side with the MWA assessment is roughly 3.4%. The budget increase without the MWA assessment, excuse me, is just about 4%. Uh, on this side of the enterprises, the MWA represents about 45% of the budget. Much like sewer, we have some personal service adjustments and overtime adjustments related. Uh, 
the admin expense went up, that split between the two houses. Interesting on this one, uh, in about 2017 to 2018, the town had authorization for $4 million in borrowing and bonding for water main work. That was banned. So that was a, a borrowing that was pushed out to delay your payments. This is the first year of the payments clicking in. Uh, so it, it rose our debt of just about $121,000. The debt line this year is $600,000 roughly. Next year, uh, that immediately starts following the other way. So next year we'll be at about 490 and it will continue to drop over the next three years to be around $100,000 and change. So this maturing debt line this year is kind of the peak and we're gonna start falling off as we move forward. Uh, for purchases of services in the water division, uh, again, we have the user charge going up. That's basically just getting ourselves ready for purchasing water from other communities. Uh, we actually purchase a lot of water in the Greenwood section off of Spring Street from Stoneham. Uh, and judging by where their assessments came in this year, we're going to assume that you know, there's probably going to be a, a pretty decent rate increase on that side. For professional services, um, this is a line item in the budget where if we need to bring a contractor in to help us with some of our work, we've been budgeting this at about $60,000 per year and we raised it 15 up to 75 just to keep pace with the cost of construction. Um, we haven't really been changing it too, too long. We felt like this is a good time to do that. The other increase that we have in professional services, we created a water production purchase of services line. And basically what this is, is with the new testing and different things that the treatment plant operators have to comply with, we want to use this line item to call that out specifically. So it's something that we can easily account for what we're doing. Um, UCMR5 is another testing standard threshold that we have to commit to, which is causing us to be doing more and sending it to labs further away. Uh, Anne can probably tell you that the FedEx bill has gotten significantly more expensive to be able to do that. So this increase is just to address that. Um, outside of that, that is basically it for water. If we have any questions or comments on that one. Nothing on the water side for me, Joe. Okay. Um, so that, in a nutshell, is the budget. Um, we're trying to be as, as modest as we can be and only really pick things that were, you know, something that was a future liability, like, like the line painting not being appropriately funded or things that we needed to kind of address more immediately. Um, Joe, Joe. Joe. Yeah. How do the roads look? Budget wise. So, so the roads are good. So we have we got our bonding last year. So we have $10 million. Um, so at town meeting this year, we're not going to have a road warrant article. We did it last year for the funding. Okay. Um, the springtime construction, obviously, you know, with basically everybody but Mass DOT shut down last spring. We were delayed a little bit, but um, come about the first week of April, they're going to be right out there getting rolling on that. And our bid should be going out any day for the next phase of that. And we're just going to continue on. So okay. that should be that should be something that um, you know, you'll start seeing rolling out really fast, uh, particularly over in your neighborhood, uh, over towards Vernon Street. Yeah, we could use it. Um, now, will, will you be um, still using that road repair guy that you guys had? Remember, we put that together. I believe it was Councilor Dombrowski. Um, asked for that were we, were we still using that still updating that yep yep so as we presented it um you know the the plan is essentially i'd call it 90 percent. so we're pretty much locked into the direction we're going only because we vetted that through our own utilities plus gas and lights utilities um you know keep in mind there always could be a change based on you know priority or something unseen that comes up but we'll generally be using that to you know take us through at least this round of funding. Once we get towards the end, we'll look to reevaluate and it might shift kind of our focus, but um, that will basically be the driver for you know a good amount of the decision-making. Yeah, I mean, cause uh, we all know, and I'm sure it's a concern for everybody. We got some, some serious um, new residents that will be coming to town uh, in the very near future. Lots and lots of condos going up and 
I'm certainly concerned for the roads. I'm, I'm sure other people are. Um, and I just want, I was just curious if there's been a talk about that or that will come up later and kind of see, uh, I'm sure eventually we're going to have to come up with something here. Um, I, I mean, I know it's unpredictable, but there's a lot of cars that are going to be put on the road in this town going forward in, in the very near future in a short period of time. And I'm certainly concerned for the roads. Uh, yeah, I 100% agree with you. So I think, I think the best course is to run through the plan as we presented it. You know, we had the goal of, of bringing the, the road grade essentially up to an 80, right? So solid B. Um, as soon as we get about 70% through, you know, this round of funding, we'll reevaluate. Okay. And, you know, the, the intent was, so the operating budget used to historically for years and years and years, fund about $200,000, which wasn't really doing much of anything other than sending us backwards. Right. Uh, so the goal is, you know, over these next couple of years, uh, the town administrator, the council, and the financial folks can put together something where we can come up with a figure more regularly. You know, maybe it's a million and a half a year, maybe it's two million a year, and it'll kind of become like snow and ice. It should right. just be automatic. You know, and it should be appropriate to at least keep pace with the level of depreciation. Right, right. So that'll right. take a little, a little bit of time, but I would say that the next, the next two, three years are going to be uh, pretty busy with that. Right, right. And while, while we're on roads, I just wanted to bring up just because we're on the subject. I have to say, our, our, our neighbors over in Melrose um, came out with uh, quite the little navigate, little tool that um, you can report a pothole in the city. I don't know if anyone else saw that. Yeah, that wasn't anything new. That was just the mayor decided he wanted to fill a pothole that day. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, and sort of advertise our work order system. Very and, cool. Yeah. And then, you know, that's the same work order system we've been using for the five years that I've been with the city. And uh, then the Channel 5 News saw his, his tweet and asked if we could do it all again the next day. Oh, good. <laughs> so that's, that's, well, that's what great. happened there. Well, I, I mean, Joe, is that something you guys have ever done or have, have ever looked into? Uh, so you can, you can certainly, there's ways to put in service requests online. Uh, you can call us, you, citizens can even flag us down and let us know. Um, and they're, they're usually very good about emailing things to us. Right. Uh, because I'm wondering with Jen McDonald, um, the new acquisition for Wakefield with the websites and computer stuff, I'm wondering if maybe she could help link something to you guys that it either goes into a certain box or so, some type of way to organize it. Because I do feel like that is a pretty, pretty good tool that I think would put people's mind at ease when they're driving what is, around. What does Wakefield use for work order management system for DPW? Uh, right now we're using people GIS is um, simple simplicity. I think they call it now. So that should be pretty easy then because they can probably people GIS could probably create a people form right on the website where you just enter in the information and it just automatically goes into the work order system. And so that's, that's, that's essentially that's essentially what we have now. You mm -hmm. can fill out what's called a service request. Uh, and in that, you know, it asks us some pertinent information on what is the condition that you're describing that you'd like us to address. Um, it's a little all-encompassing, so you could you could call it for anything: tree trimming, okay. trash, whatever. Um, could we narrow it down and, and make something more pothole-centric? Maybe. Um, I will certainly follow up with Jen first, and then when I update the board next time, we'll see if you know maybe she's even hip to something else that could narrow some of that down and, and cue some of that up, but. And, and, and I'm not looking to reinvent the wheel either, but um, I don't know, I just thought that was kind of a, a cool tool that I know that's kind of a constant uh, complaint in town is potholes and roads. And it might, um, maybe it might ease the phone calls you guys get in the office that you're, you know, taking calls about potholes and to fill them, but I don't know. I, I Maybe Jen could help you out with um, something but it's worth it looking into. I was just curious. Well, I, for, I was going to say, fortunately, Ann Waite knows all about Melrose's work order system. So <laughs> you have an in-house expert. Perfect. 
the one thing I can tell you about potholes this year is um, we took delivery finally of uh, one of the vehicles we ordered in Capital. And one of the things that we bought was we got a, we got a larger hot box, which is basically a tar kettle to keep it warm on the ride from break it. Uh, so we actually, for the good majority of the winter, had two crews out just about every day doing potholes. So um, that certainly has been something we've addressed our focus on too. So now, you know, to see what can we potentially line up to see if we can get um, more data into us to kind of send us to where the problem areas are faster. It's certainly something that we'll take a look to. Thanks, appreciate it. Anytime. Uh, Joe, this is, I know this is just sort of unrelated, but um, I'm just sharing it while it's coming across my head. Um, your group does so many things, the breadth of service that you have there. Um, and, you know, just like I can see Mayor, the, you know, Paul Broder doing his pothole, which I missed, but, um, you know, one, one thing I would, I think might be cool is if, if there could ever be, I know right now in the current um, COVID age, things are difficult, but if things ever lighten up a bit, um, wouldn't it be fun if um, Jen McDonald could have a sort of a DPW intern that would help go out with some of your crews and just do little short, you know, even little short video clips of, you know, what it's like to see that hot box you just described or to see the guys, you know, with the big crane chopping down a few trees or, you know, just kind of, it doesn't even have to be more than 45 seconds. Just, I mean, it just, I think all the stuff that you do is, is very interesting. And I'm, I'm only saying it because I follow this, um, Boston Home Inspector. I don't know if you've ever seen his Instagram, but he has the the things that homeowners do are really hysterical. Um, so just to, to see some of you know our our tax dollars um, being used so well and and the the bang for the buck that we get because you all your services help so many. Um, I just just sharing that now. So forgive me for going off topic. Um, back no, to yeah. That's not off topic at all. So I, I can tell you that just before, and I hate to keep going back to it, but I, I guess it's the elephant in the room. Um, just before everything seemed to change, yeah. that was actually a conversation we were having here is, you know, how can we share with, you know, John Q. Public what it is we're doing, when we're doing it, and how we're doing it. And that was one of the things that came up was to get more of a presence there. I can tell you myself from going to like things like Wakefield 101, a lot of times you get new residents into town or, you know, people that maybe don't know and are curious and start asking questions. It always comes up and they always say, what do you guys do? And in reality, I mean, I guess the easier thing would just to be to explain to you what we're not involved with. Uh, it's a shorter list. Right. But it's definitely, it's definitely something I would say, correct me if I'm wrong, Elena, probably industry-wide. Um, I guess we've been so busy putting our head down and just taking care of the task at hand that I feel like it's time to stop and kind of explain and, and show some of these things because I, I really do think that, you know, it'll bridge the understanding piece. Um, and then, you know, to make what we're doing more relatable, you know, obviously makes everybody on the same page and hopefully it turns out a better end for them. Yeah, I agree. I, I think as an industry, we don't do a good job touting all the things that we're out doing every day. So yeah, and I, I also agree with Chris, maybe Jen McDonald might have some ideas of ways to kind of push that information out um, in more creative ways so people can see different things going on in the community. So I know when we, when we first, uh, when Jen first came in, we actually filmed a two uh, commercials with WCAT, but what we did, they're more of an infomercial, right? To explain um, hydrant flushing, and to also explain the parking ban. Uh, so, you know, we were looking at different ways to kind of get the, get the word out there, get, you know, the information out there. I love pictures myself because they don't have to have one word on it, but you can kind of see everything that you need to see. Um, so it's definitely something that, uh, you know, hopefully in the short term, we start seeing increase now. Thanks, Joe. 
Uh, <clears throat> anything else? Budget related, I feel like uh, that that is it. Unless the board has any more questions. And what will we be uh, voting on this as one, or do we need to vote on these individually? Um, nope. I could. I would say you could vote on uh, the budget as a whole, and the vote would be to recommend it to be presented to the town council for adoption. Did anyone else have any uh, discussion or anything to add? Well, if that's if that's the case, I would entertain a motion to approve the budget as presented. So moved. So moved. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries three zero. Yeah. Shifting gears to town meeting. Uh, so in the packet that I sent out, uh, we have three Warren articles that are headed to town meeting. Um, the first one that I'll talk about is our eminent domain article for dollar. This is an annual automatic article we put forward every year uh, to let us take easements and takings and different things that we need from time to time for construction. Um, we've probably been doing this article for 25, 30 years, it's just automatic in the spring. Um, so there's absolutely no, no changes uh, to that one. Uh, the next article is the refuse budget. Uh, so this is the contracts that we talked about last time uh, being set in year one and a couple of other changes. Um, last year in refuse, our original request was 2.274 million. And that was cut down to 2.1 million for the year. Uh, basically what that number was is all the gravel, all the leaf processing, and then the disposal of street sweepings was not done. It was deferred. So we are sitting on uh, that year's pile plus the year to come. In this year's budget, uh, we have asked for 2.284 million, which is $10,000 more than last year for $184,000 more than what it was cut to, uh, which represents about 9%. And what that is, is we've restored the yard waste processing. The One of the fantastic things that we were able to do last spring was essentially open the hot street every day. So people that were home and stir crazy could go outside, get some exercise, rake their leaves, and then have somewhere to take it to. The downside to that is we are sitting on a mountain of leaves and you know, other biodegradable compost that is, is quite large and, and cumbersome. Um, so this year's budget is restoring you know, that, that movement to, to haul some, some of the material out of there and gain some space. Out, outside of that, there's a little bit of an adjustment for uh, opening the yard waste site related to uh, personal services uh, and some of the overtime rate fluctuation. The one sad thing um, about this year's budget is the third grade education program has been zeroed out. Unfortunately, that program, uh, I don't know if any of you outside of probably Elena have seen it, but when Earth Tunes comes in, we get the whole third grade at the elementary school together in the gym. They sing, they use puppets, they interact. It's, it's a very large scale group activity and not knowing um, essentially what the next year is going to bring. We didn't feel like it was appropriate to budget for that and try to do that. Uh, I feel like the schools are going to have a, enough on their plate just trying to get kids back into the classroom and learning and to try to interject ourselves into their space during this time, you know, when they're trying to figure out their day-to-day, -day, probably wasn't appropriate. So knowing that the financial piece for the year is, is kind of up in the air, we decided that this year we would just defer the funding for that. I hope would be that when everybody's healthier and it's safer to do so, uh, we'll return and the program will be better than ever. Um, but until that time, um, that will not be happening this year. As recommended. Joe, what is, what is the normal funding level for that program? $32,000 was the number last year. So that okay. did all the schools. Um, it got all the kids some of the goodie bags that we would give away. Um, then it also did a couple other things you know, related to 
um, some of the festivals by the lake and things like that. It's real education heavy. Um, we still plan on doing a lot of that, but it would be, you know, kind of out of our regular administrative staff, you know, doing our normal term of business. Um, I don't think you're probably going to see any outdoor arrangements or things like that until probably at least this time next year. Um, it would be nice if, if there could still be some school interaction, even if it was just making some videos that the, the teachers play for their kids over Zoom or something, or even just play in the classroom um, next fall. Because I, I think it's, it's such a good program. And I worry that you, if you kind of lose that momentum of, of missing a whole year, that it might never really get back to what it was. Um, so we, we actually did that. Uh, we had uh, Barbara and Steve, the musicians, they actually made uh, a video for okay. the classrooms. So uh, that's going to be something we'll give to them. And then, you know, we might, we might be able to do some sort of a, um, some things we've done in the past, like we did a poster contest for Arbor Day, um, you know, the kids that won but a sapling. We could probably even do, you know, something related to stormwater and maybe raffle off a barrel or, you know, something for the schools like that. Um, we'll certainly try to push something like that where it's a little bit less, it's a little bit more intimate than it is on the large scale like we we're doing. But you're right, it is it is fun to do, and I hope that it does it does come back. Great. So with the with the budget that I sent you last year. And for the last couple of years, we have been sending this to the council every year to kind of take a look at. On the second page, we also present them data on what a potential fee for bulk items would look like and how that would impact the budget if the council were to adopt that. So the second, tab, uh, second tab, excuse me, on the bottom of that spreadsheet kind of goes through that. Um, it is unknown whether or not the council has the appetite for that. Um, this is just something we're doing our due diligence and want to show that to them so that they have all the information they, they need to be able to make a decision. Um, just running through that really quick. So our average uh, for the last five years, excluding 2021, because the numbers were so skewed uh, related to everybody being home, we averaged 8,457 stops a year for bulk collection. So those are all requests for someone asking for us to pick up an item. That could be one item, they are limited at two. So that could be two items. So what we did was we basically took the participation rate and used a whole bunch of different uh, potential costs, anywhere between five and $25. And we showed if we hit our average for the next year and charge $5 for it, what would this generate? If we hit half of our average for the next year and charge $5 for it, what would this average? And then we, we show that against the budget to show what the potential um, you know, reduction could be. We've also included the DEP survey. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, this is all 2021, end of 2020 numbers, uh, different communities around. And you'll see on that that the average from all of it averages out to be about $15 um, per bulk item. So this is included in there um, for their review, um, just to give them you know, all the tools that they want. Uh, I'm not 100% sure uh, if there would be any conversation related to it. Uh, there could be, there might not be, but you know, this is something we present to them again annually, just to make sure that they're informed with every possible potential that they could be. Just out of curiosity, if, if they were to um, endorse something like this, how would you go about um, collecting the fees? How, do, how would that work? So we would treat it uh, just like a white good or CRT TV. So we would have to sell a sticker. And if the item has a sticker affixed to it, then it would be picked up by JRM. If it didn't, it would not be. And so you would, someone then would have to make a trip to town hall to get the sticker? Yes, um, you can actually order those other, the CRT TVs and micro stickers online too. Um, and believe okay. it or not, um, we'll either mail them out or deliver them, depending on um, you know, where it is and what we're doing. Okay. We would just add it in as a third tier to, to that process. That seems like it's the cleanest and easiest. Um, 
JRM probably could certainly take that on. Uh, that may or may not require amending the contract a little bit. I mean, for us, we're doing it anyway. For the other two, it doesn't it doesn't really seem like a, a massive inconvenience if that were to be the case. What is the rate, though, of um, stickers for the other two? Are they in this 8,000 whatever on average, 8,400 on average? Um, no, I don't, I don't have that in this. this. So this is just for, this is just bulk item requests. Um, right. No, I'm just saying that it could, I'm just thinking of your time. So, you know, if, if 8,400 residents are coming to you all for stickers and things, that could also, you have to account for that administrative time as well, right? I'm just saying, just on your yeah. end. No, nope, no, nope, certainly, certainly. If you have any any suggestions, if, if this <laughs> become reality, we'd be more than willing. Like you have, you know, I need you my DPW go away wand, right? <laughs> <laughs> Biodegradable go away. <laughs> Joe, do we take a vote on each each of them, or is a slate of three? Um, you can do the slate of three if you choose to. The chair would entertain a motion from anybody. I got to go through the third one though before you do it. Okay. Sorry. Um, and then the the last uh, Warren article that we're going to have uh, for this year is a supplemental budget appropriation. So what this is is the storm, the windstorm that we got in the end of August. Um, basically turned our tree removal budget upside down. And the month it took to recover from that and remove all the debris and make all the fixes to everything that came down in that, you know, 35 minute window, uh, we actually spent $192,000. So the supplemental budget appropriation is the way the town is addressing that overspend and addressing it to zero it out. I wish I had a cleaner and easier way to explain it, but it's it's basically making up for what we had to go above and beyond to take care of business for that. That's um, um, this will be a this will also be a warrant article too that um, this will not have a number attached to it. So what what we're hoping is that you know if there's any savings seen in the parks and forestry budget or you know, potentially another area of the tax levy side of the budget that they could apply that to this balance to zero it out um, so that, you know, accounting will only need to appropriate whatever the difference might be. If things keep going the way that they have been going uh, related to how the year has looked, we stand in, in pretty decent shape to take a good dent out of that number. But unfortunately, we won't know until we get a little bit closer toward the end of the fiscal year. Any discussion? Maria, anything? No, I think it. <clears throat> so, Chris, can I just make one recommendation? Uh -huh. On voting uh, approval to send the Warren articles to the town council for inclusion on the warrant. I would just have the motion say um, that you're voting to recommend the articles as presented or otherwise altered by the town council. And the reason for that is uh, they have to have a conversation about the refuse article. Um, and I would hate to see them decide that they wanted to think about a potential bulk fee and then not have a recommendation from the board that would match it. Um, eminent domain will not change. Um, the supplemental budget appropriation won't change. That's the only place where they could have a little bit of discussion. So just want to make sure that you're open-ended enough to align with you know whatever they may or may not do. Okay. So I, I'll make a motion to approve the or to recommend the town meeting articles as presented tonight and as. Uh, potentially modified by the council pending their discussion. Second. All in, fa all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 3 to 0. Okay. 
Thanks, Joe. Any, any other business? No. We, we, we could do uh, five or 10 uh, water abatements if everyone's up for it. <laughs> no, thanks. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'll cancel that for today. <laughs> No, I, I got a feeling that the next the next time we meet, we'll uh, we're gonna have a whole bunch of things to update you on. So that that portion of the conversation might be a little bit longer. And we'll also probably it'd probably be smart to start thinking about uh, the rate setting process for the year. Maybe to be a little bit, or even though it'll be a little earlier than where we're typically at, uh, it'll give us some flexibility with the meetings. Um, I always feel like we get to a certain point and then we feel like we're under the gun to you know get the work finished. So maybe if we yeah, start and have a little bit more of a medium pace, it'll, it'll be a little easier to balance. Yeah, especially it's a touchy subject. So I'd certainly like to mm. put as much time into it as we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, next meeting, did you want to set that now or? Um, we, we can, um, if yeah. not, um, I know the later. wants to send an email back and forth maybe to figure out what, what, what do you need uh, to meet with us by a specific date at all in April? No, no. so we had this meeting. Uh, this meeting takes care of town meeting. Um, the only next thing that we would have to, you know, definitely have a meeting and a vote before would be uh, the rate setting. So we are, we are good until then. I don't think, I don't believe we have any stormwater projects coming in. We have to have a presentation to the board. Uh, and there are currently no betterments, so there's nothing with time deadlines that locks us into one date or another. Okay, so it's, uh, should we be waiting till after election season and you know our you know new year starting, whether I get reappointed or not, or should oh, we? Have, can uh, I ask on that? Yes. When does that? When does the council um, reappoint folks? Do you know, Joe? Uh, with. I want to say after the election, usually it's like the one of the first meetings. It typically coincides with it. Um, at the risk of putting my foot in my mouth, I would look that up and get back to you. But um, I don't know. Uh, Ann could probably answer this. We would probably have to have a March meeting at some point in time. Okay. Or, or an early April meeting, I should say, uh, just in case you know there are any abatements. Or yep. there. We don't want to keep those people waiting too, too long. Mm -hmm. um, then, uh, Elena, I, I do want to set a date now. I know you like to do it earlier, too. I know you're busy, so. Yeah. Um, it looks like the date that's not good for me in terms of um, Cub Scout meetings is the 29th. So... It appears the 22nd is good and April 5th is good. So I don't know if you have a preference. Joe, is that, if, if, does April 5th give you a little time to put some stuff together too? Yeah, I think, I think April 5th is fine. Okay. okay. Maria, is that okay with you? Sure, that's fine. And if something comes up, obviously, you know, we can switch it or whatever, whatever we got to do. But I figured at least we can kind of set a date today. So that yeah, that, that actually uh, probably works out pretty well because, you know, we're, we're after, uh, you know, the council presentations of the budgets and, and things like that. But we're before town meeting. So if we want to address anything at that point in time, we can. And will that be at 530? Is that good or what, what time works for you all? If it's, a lo if it's a loaded schedule, I don't, I mean, that's different to start early, but we can start at 530 unless there's, you know, if we have a long laundry list of abatements or something that's different. Yeah, if we want to start at five, if it's, if it's really long. Yeah. That's fine with me. Fine with me. Just, yeah. So your, I guess your call, Joe and, and Ann. Yeah, let us know if there's a lot of abatements I'd like to start early, but if not, then we can just leave it regular time. So People don't have to rush around if you don't have to. Uh, either way, I'm going to deflect to Ann. I'm I'm going to be here anyway. So. Yeah, I uh, I can uh, keep people. Right now, we don't have any on the docket right now to do. So. Okay. All right. So we'll set a meeting for April fifth at uh, five thirty, unless something changes. That sounds good. 
And then the chair would uh, entertain a motion for adjournment. I'll make a motion to adjourn at 6.07 p.m. All Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much.